from National Public Radio in Washington, D.C. This is Weekend Edition. From Shreveport, Louisiana, the unlikely rebirth of Ram Records. Stay with us. This is Weekend Edition. I'm Alex Chadwick. Isn't it true that someone comes in from out of town and you're showing them around and they notice all the stuff that gets by you? You used to see it, maybe, but you don't anymore. The way the hills roll, say, or the iridescent blue the neighbors chose for the front door of their place. The person from away sees differently and hears differently, too. When are you going to settle down? We're on the streets, baby. That tune was recorded and published more than 30 years ago in northwest Louisiana in Shreveport by a little company called Ram Records. No one's heard much of this music lately or of Ram either. It went out of the recording business decades ago. Now, a longtime fan of rockabilly and rhythm and blues and the Louisiana mix of flavors, an Englishman named Ray Topping has assembled the first of what are to be several Ram Record compilations. And this first one is called Shreveport Stomp. Hey, The Ram story is all the more remarkable, Ray Topping notes, because 40 years ago in Shreveport, the only music business was a radio show called the Louisiana Hayride, which launched stars like Hank Williams and Elvis Presley and many, many others. But as soon as they got famous, they went elsewhere. And if it would be tough for anyone to start a record label in Shreveport, it was tougher still in this case, because the founder of Ram Records was Myra Smith, a guitar player, a singer, a songwriter, and a woman. Ray Topping talked with us from our studios in London. It was very unusual for a woman to be running a record company. And uh, I don't think a lot of the people like the distributors and other people sort of thought she was serious like, you know. And I think that's, that stood in a way quite a bit. It wasn't anything to do with the quality of the music. How did she find these artists to record? Well, first of all, she would handpick people what appeared on the Louisiana Hayride. And then later on, she then decided to go out on sort of field trips and, and she'd go to places like South Louisiana and that's where she discovered Roy Perkins, one of my favourites on the label. Was this a hit? Was this song a hit? No, no. I mean, in fact, uh, Bardar never actually got released at the time. Myra put it out in the early 70s on a special Ram release. And she put an advert in one of the record magazines and saying you can get these reissues or repressings of um, some old Ram material. And that's how you heard about it? And that's how I heard about it. I see this advert that she was selling them for, a, you know, a dollar a piece, I think. And... Uh, sent me money off for that. How is it that you found an affinity and love for this music and, and came over here and kind of rediscovered Graham? Well, I think it all stems from uh, growing up in England during the late 50s, and I was a big fan of rock and roll when it emerged in England, uh, you know, and we heard all the American recordings like Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis, and uh, it was really my love of the music from the States, and particularly the Southern States, Somehow that feeling's there on those records out the southern states, which is often lacking in the uh, records from, say, New York and places. Did Ram Records ever have a real hit? What's the biggest song they did? Uh, well, I would say probably Flatfoot Sam by TV Slim, which obviously sold pretty well because they, it, she cut the original version, which is on this CD, and then Chess got hold of it for distribution, and they said, could you go and record it again? Because they thought it was a little bit, it could be slickened up a bit more. So she went down to New Orleans and got it recut again with uh, Fats Domino's band. 
and then it had lost momentum because the original version which is on this cd was getting all the action around texas louisiana yeah it's got uh, a, it's got a great kind of uh, energy in it doesn't it yes and see what happened is when they recut it it was a a more faster version more slicker version but it didn't have the originality of, uh, of the first version Back from Sam, got a job. Did any of the people that Myra Smith discovered go on to be big stars? I don't think anybody on the label there actually went on to be a bigger star. I mean, I think it's a situation again, Ram just didn't have that clout to get it all around America. And see, the other thing is, Alex, you've got to realise is that uh, during that 50s period, uh, Payola played a big important part in the record business. In getting artists heard. Yeah, getting you, artists heard, yes. You, you had to be able to pay to get the play on the air, and Myra Smith and Ram Records, they were just too little. Too little, she couldn't afford that Payola, which uh, some of the big northern companies were paying out, you know, to disc jockeys, and, uh, and consequently your stuff just got, you know, she would have sent them off to Billboard for review, she would have sent them to to different radio stations but unless you had that clout that's why the records never got played enough or uh, played at all by certain radio stations what about a song like uh, red beans and rice what happened to that well that one again it, it, it as, as far as i know didn't go anywhere it may have got some local radio play in in louisiana but it, as far as my knowledge goes it didn't get anywhere at the time which is strange <laughs> very strange You know what's strange, listening to you and listening to this music, mm. is that someone who is so obviously not an American may have discovered these treasures of American music and restored them to us. Yes, I, you know, I like to think I've gone a long way to be doing that. In England here, we sort of probably put a lot more effort into sort of discovering American music than probably the Americans do. Now, they are, they are getting in onto it a bit more now in the States, but, I mean, we've been doing this now for a, about 15 years, and, uh, and it's still, you know, we've still got lots more things to find still. I've got um, a list as long as your arm of more labels to pick up. I'm still currently uh, checking out a few more people down south with uh, some amazing recordings, so it's not going to be the end of it. Ray Topping in London talking about his latest compilation of music, Shreveport Stomp from Ace Records. Listening to this CD in an office at NPR with the door open and speakers blaring, there was one cut in particular that had people asking if this was Patsy Cline. Hello, baby. Yes, it's really me. It is not Patsy Cline, it is Margaret Lewis, who co-wrote Reconsider Me, a hit for rhythm and blues artist Johnny Adams. But this demo version of Margaret Lewis singing lead and backup vocals and playing guitar and drums with Myra Smith, also on guitar, this version was never released until now. Margaret Lewis lives in Shreveport, Louisiana. We reached her in a studio there to ask why we've never heard her version of her own song. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> one of those questions you know i made a lot of demos as a lot of songwriters or you know singer songwriters i was concentrating mostly on writing songs and uh looking back i think your question is very valid i should have probably concentrated more on the singing so if you will let me i will love you
Somehow, national stardom passed by Margaret Lewis, despite that extraordinary voice and early recognition. Back in high school, she started her own rockabilly band, Margaret Lewis and the Thunderbolts. She won a local talent contest, which meant a tryout with the Louisiana Hayride in Shreveport. And there she met the owner of Ram Records, Myra Smith. Margaret Lewis was 17 years old when she made her first recording for Ram, Cheaters Can't Win. You are seen, and look what a shame, you can't live by the rules of the game. But Ram Records was competing with companies like Atlantic and Imperial and Chess Records. And it was particularly tough for a woman, Margaret Lewis says, even one as determined as Myra Smith. It was difficult, but it was also a lot of fun, you know, having a studio, getting to go in and experiment with the music and working with all the different musicians and singers and people that were passing through or living in Shreveport at the time. And unfortunately, the Hayride closed down in 1960, so Shreveport became musically an inactive town for many years. Nashville, of course, went just the opposite. They promoted the music there, and it became, of course, a recording center. People were going up to the Grand Ole Opry, and that radio show was really taking off then. That's right. Margaret Lewis and Myra Smith tried Nashville for a while, but 20 years ago, Myra finally decided to shut down Ram Records. Eventually, both women returned to Shreveport, where Margaret continues as a singer today. She's married to Myra Smith's cousin, Alton Warwick. And when Myra died of leukemia a few years ago, Margaret Lewis became co-owner of the long-neglected Ram Records archives. And then one Sunday evening, about a year ago, the telephone rang. And there, calling from England, was Ray Topic. We got a phone call, oh, I guess about 7 o'clock, and... This English voice comes on the phone, my husband answered, and it's Ray Topping from England, just out of the blue, wanting to know if we are the people that have Ram Records. So Alton said yes, and so then the conversation, as it progressed, he asked Alton if he knew the singer Margaret Lewis. And Alton said, well, I certainly do. Uh, in fact, she's in the kitchen now uh, fixing a bit of supper. Would you like to speak to her? <laughs> So uh, then that's how we met Ray Topping, and he's since been over to Shreveport a couple of times and started going through these boxes and boxes of uh, RAM tapes that have been stored 30 years and or so and um, rediscovering all of this stuff. It is a total surprise to me because we sort of thought, you know, that was all in the past. You're in a studio down there in Shreveport now. That's right. I wonder, you have your instrument with you? Yes. Could you play something for us that you play now when you go out to sing? Um, I have my good friend Buddy Flett with me. Buddy is uh, one of the Flett brothers uh, who have the group The Bluebirds. He's going to join me in the studio, and maybe yeah. we could just do a little um, blues number or something. Yeah, that'd be great. You got me running, got me hiding, got me running. just say that was terrific and you ought to be out on the road all the time <laughs> with the band oh i'd love it 
I'm ready to go. Looking back, Margaret Lewis, on what happened with Ram Records, with the Louisiana Hayride closing down and music moving away from Shreveport, big commercial music, do you feel like you missed out on stuff that somehow it didn't happen for you? Well, I guess I do, actually. I, um, I feel like that is a missing part of my life and my career because um, I love to sing and I love to um, perform. And uh, if through the blessing of fate and things that happen now, I, I would be most grateful. Margaret Lewis, good luck to you. Thank you, Alex. Let's go out on one more if we could. Well, how about reconsider me? Okay, that's great. Margaret Lewis spoke and sang from Ron Capone Studios in Shreveport, Louisiana. As one of their next projects, Ace Records in England will be releasing an entire CD of Margaret Lewis material. This is NPR's Weekend Edition, directed by Alice Winkler, with production help this week from Ken Hom, Peter Breslow, Marta Haywood, Deborah Schifrin, Tish Falba, Deborah Kirsch, Sarah Bayer kelly and program librarians Beth Howard and Catherine Plum. The technical director is Bill McQuay, with engineers Soraya Muhammad, Marty Curseus, Preston Brown, Vince Muse, and Tom Carpenter. The senior editor is Steve Tripoli, the senior producer Cindy Carpium. Scott Simon's back next week. I'm Alex Chapman.